And so we're so glad you're still in the blessing business. Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah, God. We just pray right now, God, as we stand to preach your word, that you would stand in my body, think with my mind, preach with my lips, and that every word that I say give you honor and glory. Let the words of my mouth and the very meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. And I got some folks here who declare it, that they want it all. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Turning your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 5. We have a long narrative to read, so I'm going to try to read it expeditiously. 2 Kings chapter 5. We got to read the whole chapter in order to get this sermon right. Stand to your feet, honor God's word if you're able. This is our last sermon for the You Ask For It series. Amen. Second Kings, this Old Testament historical book, chapter 5. I have a King James Bible. Is everybody there? Say amen. amen. If you want me to wait, say wait, Pastor. I'm, I'm trying to get there. Wait, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Let's turn. Don't go too far to the back front side of your Bibles. We've got a lot of new believers here. Let's help them get to where they need to go. All of us continue to study and know the 66 books of the Bible so you can find it real fast. Amen. So you can know how to wield your sword. All right. Amen. My Bible is a King James Bible and it reads thusly. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria he was also a mighty man in valor but he was a leper and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid and she waited on Naaman's wife and she said unto her mistress would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to go, to go and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now... But this letter is come unto thee. Behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent or tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man does send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know. He shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth or angry and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Thephar rivers of Damascus better than all the rivers of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Somebody say ungrateful. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. 
But he said, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two meals, a burden of earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offerings nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. In this thing the Lord pardoned thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon to worship there, he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself unto the house of Rimon. When I bow myself in the house of Rimon, the Lord pardoned thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, Go into peace. So he departed from him a little way. But Gehazi, but Geha, but Gehazi the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master, has spared Naaman, the Syrian, is not receiving at his hand that which he brought, but as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now, there he come to me from Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophet. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and they bare them for him. And when he came to the tower, he took them in from the hand and bestowed them in the house and he let the man go and they departed. But he went in and stood before his master and Elisha said unto him, Whence cometh thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. And he said unto him, Went not my heart went thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and man servants? Somebody say hustler. The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from, from his presence a leper as white as snow. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Indeed, that was a lot of reading, but you need to hear this word. I want to preach from the subject, skin deep. Skin deep. Look at your neighbor and say, look at me closely. I'm more than you see. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're looking mighty good. Skin deep, skin. Skin, 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 skin deep skin deep one morning this brother this this man who's a health freak and likes to eat natural all day long he 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 decides to wake up and as he always is squeezing oranges oranges for his breakfast his regular habit uh, he wanted fresh orange juice and he noticed that morning that many of his oranges that he was squeezing had a rather ugly spots and blemishes on the outside of the skin. But as that brother cut into the orange, he opened them and they looked beautiful and tasted incredible on the inside and rendered him an abundance of sweet juice. Somebody say sweet juice. However, one of the oranges that he cut in half had a greenish black spot or spoilage right in the middle. Uh, he rejected it and threw the in the compost pile. Anybody know about the compost pile? Making your garden looking good. Uh, to avoid, he didn't want to mix the good juice with the juice of this one that had green and a black spot at its center. Because this particular orange that had the green and black spot looked great on the outside. It had no blemishes, no, no nicks on it. It was perfectly uh, orange and beautiful on the outside. Uh, and so, but right in the middle was a dark spot of rottenness. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is some things are skin deep. And we, we, we cannot determine all that we are and others are until we go deeper on the inside. See, that's, that's what this narrative is all about, because Na Na Naaman was a warrior, a, a real warrior, a, a foreigner in the, uh, to the land of Israel. And, and if you don't know, warriors are self-reliant. 
they're nation proud. They know how to get things done and never show weaknesses. Uh, this warrior who was a general is one of the main archetypes, the main male archetypes, because uh, men have uh, many different archetypes. So one of the ones that we want to be known as is, is to be a warrior. Uh, even men who never go to war must learn to be strong and to do hard things in order to provide for and to protect their families. Do I have a witness? And so it's a powerful picture and an important part of experiencing male identity uh, to know how to get things done. No, no sister really wants to be connected to a man uh, that, that has no vision and don't want to get anything done. Do I have one sister in the house? All right. Uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad that this brother here, he, he gets things done because he understands there's a larger purpose for, for his life. Naaman gets things done. He's a general, and he directs many men. Many men follow Naaman. Men, men find great resources and energy and courage and faith in themselves. Because one of the things that many warriors do is we learn to rely on our own self to get things done. And we don't even trust that many people to do it. And so today's story reveals three things, and I want you to write these down because I'm going to go right to the points. Three things about people and God that this narrative uh, tutors and teaches us about. Today's story reveals three things about people and God and teaches us three things. I want you to remember them before you leave out here. You remember? Number one, God places pivotal people to shift you toward your, your life, shift your life toward healing. God places pivotal people to shift your life toward healing. And let me just interject and say, healing is not just physical. There's healing mentally, physically, spiritually, come on, y'all, financially, holistically. So God places pivotal people that he's assigned to your life to shift your life toward wholeness and healing. Number two, I want you to remember that God pushes people beyond their normal or their comfort zones to truly bless them. If you really want to be blessed, God pushes you out of your comfort zone, out beyond your normal, to bless you. And thirdly, I'm going to close it out. God punishes pimps hanging around with prophets. God punishes pimps. It's all in the story. It's all right there. That hangs around with prophets. Number one, God places pivotal people to shift your life toward healing. God pushes, number two, people beyond their normal or comfort zones in order to bless them. And three, God punishes pimps hanging around prophets. Let's, 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 let's look at this from... From the beginning, from, uh, from the beginning, you all read the story with me. You may not get it all from the King James Version. Sometimes it's good to read your Bible in many versions, at least three versions when you're reading it and studying it. But from the beginning of Naaman's story, we know a few things about him. One, he's a foreigner, particularly a powerful foreigner as a gen general, because he's a commanding general uh, to the army of Israel's enemy, the Syria, or another name for them is Aram in Scripture. And, and Naaman also has leprosy. He has the HIV AIDS disease of their day. Uh, and it appears that leprosy of that day did not carry the stigma or social and cultic alienation like HIV and AIDS did and still does here and now. Uh, in Syria and Aram, uh, it didn't carry the same stigma such as described in Leviticus 13 and 14, when you have time, read it, uh, because the leprosy this, this automatically makes you unclean, where you can't be part of the community. But here we have a general leading an army, actively leading an army who has leprosy. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it is clear from the story that this leprosy is something that Naaman and perhaps maybe his wife wanted to be rid of, because everybody should want to be healed. Right. And all of us have an area of our life that needs to be healed. But everybody is not open to getting their healing. Y'all got to understand that. Because there, 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 there is systems of behavior and experiences that cause us not to trust people. 
and cause us to have a distance from people so we can't get healed uh, until we get past some of our comfort zones. And, and I, so I want you to understand that God puts pivotal people uh, in your life to shift you toward your healing because he doesn't want you just to be saved. He, he wants you to be saved and whole. Uh, he wants you to be set free from anything that's attacking you in your life. And listen, you need to learn, and I need to also learn, what areas that is, that we, that, that's constantly keeping us producing the same dysfunctional systems and behaviors. Help me, Holy Ghost. And, 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 and so this, he wants to get rid of it, but, but it's critical if you understand the story that an essential, the word essential character in the story is this Israelite slave girl. Look at her. She's taken captive. She has come to serve the wife of Naaman. Though nameless in the story, her role is pivotal. Uh, uh, so some, sometimes we missing people who are assigned to us, but don't look like they're nobody. Mm -hmm. God places pivotal people to shift your life toward wholeness and healing. And, and people who you will not expect will be the very one that God uses. Uh, many people, the rejected one, the marginalized one, the one don't, don't smell good or look good, but God put them in your way for a reason. Because, but, but sometimes you, you missing what God has for you. Oh, help me preach. And, and so that's why we got to be careful mm -hmm, how we treat people. How we treat them based on their social position, their social status, uh, the, the way they look, the way they dress, the way they walk, who they hang out with. Mm -hmm. Be careful how you size people up and draw conclusions about who they are and, and where they are in relationship to you. Uh, don't, don't sell people short. And, and, and I was teaching the book of John that, that, that we should all be studying the book of John because the book of John uh, gives you a panoramic view of Jesus. And, and if you put a table uh, with chairs all around it, many of us only have a one view of a person. But you got to go all around the table and sit in all the seats to learn more about the person. And, and, and so you, you, you know you're a pastor from church, but I'm not just your pastor. I'm a husband, I'm a father, and I'm not just the titles. I, I, I'm way more than what you see on Sunday. I got good days and I got bad days. Just talk to First Lady, she'll tell you about it. And you got to be around somebody for a number of times to know really who they are before you pass judgment about them. Preach Pastor Maxwell. Be around me, don't, don't make no conclusions. Because you assume I like to be around a lot of people. Not really. I like being by my daggone self. But the calling calls me to stand around people. Preach Pastor Maxwell. The calling stands. So, so, so it's just, this, this, this young girl who's taken and kidnapped from home. People who you least expected. So, so, so you see her there. God uses pivotal people, sometimes enemies and frenemies. Sometimes your best friend could be your worst friend. Sometimes people are shifting you in the wrong direction that does not agree with God's destiny for you. And so you have to be able to discern who God is using to place you uh, into his direction for your life. Uh, it says he, God, God used Lot to shift Abraham to the land of promise. God used Jethro and his family to get Moses to the burning bush. God used Jezebel to drive Elijah to find Elisha. God used Delilah to position Sam and Samson to a place to destroy all his enemies in one day. God used Nathan to convict David and turn him back to God. God used Ananias to get the blind Saul to a street called Straight so he can become Paul. God used Judas to push Jesus to the cross so you can get a crown. God places pivotal people uh, in your life for salvation, deliverance, and healing. Look again. Look again at the slave girl. Her faith, my God, and expectation of how God works through a prophet is still in place, although she's in slavery. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all go, y'all go. Did you get that when I just said? Her faith is still in place, 
all day she was snatched out of her land and made a slave to serve master in master's house. She still got a faith in place. Oh, hallelujah. And look, look at verse 3. He said, would God, my Lord, that's a little L, by the way, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. She, 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 she's looking past the title skin. She's looking past the general title skin. She's looking past the reputation skin. She's looking past the position skin, and she sees a need. Although he's a general and ruling armies, he got leprosy. She, she's not concerned about the skin of his position and the skin of his reputation and the skin of how everybody salutes him when he walks in, uh, how everybody bows down even for him and how he represents the king. She's not, she's not con, con, uh, thinking about that kind of skin. Uh, and, and she speaks a word. Look at her in the text. She breaks out of the silence of slavery. And it's her speaking that begins Naaman's healing. Can I say that one more time? It's her speaking that begins Naaman's healing. And sometimes uh, uh, there are people in your life that has a word of transition for you, but you ain't listening to them. And I'm saying they have a capital W, a word straight from God, a prophetic word, a, a word that can take you from being pathetic to prophetic. Uh, so, sometimes they have a word for someone else. So, so somebody has a word to shift your life. And sometimes the word that you need is wrapped in struggle. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. Sometimes the word you, you need is not beautiful and comfort. The person that's delivering it don't look like they can do anything for you. Uh, they don't, 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 don't act like they, they may have chains on them. But just because I got chains on me, my mind ain't changed. Uh, my, 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 my spirit and my soul is not in chains. Uh, there's a God that's inside of me that keeps me free. Now, even though you put chains on my ankles and chains on my hand, this slave girl is pivotal. Mm hmm she, she's speaking. She, uh, her speaking begins Naaman's healing. And, and though she's a, a displaced insider, write that in your notes, she's a displaced insider. She's the one who directs Naaman to the healing power of the Lord, the God of Israel, by way of Israel prophet, who is Elisha. Uh, she is, a, listen, an initiator of hope. Oh, my God. You mean to tell me a girl that's been kidnapped out of her house uh, taken to a foreign land, placed in a house to be a slave, uh, to, to now uh, take care of a wife of a general. You mean to tell me this type of girl uh, can offer hope to somebody? She, she, she can initiate hope. I'm trying to tell you, when your faith in God is mature, uh, it's not the condition uh, of your outside that determines the hope that you can offer somebody. Uh, you, you got something to offer somebody. Uh, even though there's some people who will reject you and abandon you, talk you down, you have so something on the inside that can cause you to initiate hope. She, she is an initiator of hope, and sometimes God will put hope in the purpose, a person who is least likely to embody hope. She was captive, taken out of her land, made a slave in a foreign country. She was a slave in the house of the general uh, who army waged war against her nation. You, you're going to help the general of the army that's waging war to be healed? Yes. You see, when, when, when you are God's person, when you love God, he said that even love your enemies. When you're really mature and you're really uh, ready to move to another level, you will even offer Christ to your enemy. You will offer hope to the one who has already contained your faith. You will offer the one that wounded you, that's kidnapped you. We're talking about the general of the army who snatched her out of the land. And she says, she observes him. She goes, hmm, I know exactly how your Negro can get healed. There's a prophet in the land who has the power of God, the true God of Israel. And so she is not like us because when we don't like somebody or somebody do something wrong to us or even our own spouses, we, we don't treat them like this, this hope for them. We marginalize them and we minimize them. We've got to learn how to love people in spite of who they are. 
Can I say that one more time? I don't know about you, but I don't need to be married to somebody who can't get past my faults. Because every believer, Jesus looked past my faults and saw my knee. So why don't we believers start looking past each other's faults? We all got it. I got a long list. How many of you got a list of faults that if they took a good look, a good close look at it, you'd be having fault number one, two, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four. We all have them. But the reason, listen, the reason why people are in, the, in your life and you are in their life, because God thinks that you have something uh, in his godness to offer the person he allowed you to be in your circle because he wants you to influence them to the right. So if I'm weak in this area and you may be strong, love me to a place where I can become a little like you or take over in that area. Please, Pastor Maxwell. Oh, I just had Sherry jump in my head. I just have my wife jump in my head. Oh, she's talking to me right now. Say, okay, baby. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Woo. It's upon her word that Naaman approaches the king of Syria with a request to follow this lead toward his own healing. She gives a prophetic word and shifts past protocol. You see, why now would the king of Syria write a letter to the king of Israel when he's just been destroying Israel and snatching women and children and in war with them? But that king of Syria, his friend Naaman, needs his help. And so some, sometimes people do good things, but they do it the, the wrong way. And so we, we, we see as you quickly enter the story, uh, this girl gives a word and then you never hear from her anymore. As quickly as she came in the story, she fades to the background, and you don't hear nothing about this girl. Can I say something to you? Uh, I just want to say that pivotal people purpose, once it's over, they leave. Uh oh, I got to say that again. Pivotal people purpose is served for you to get closer to God, then they leave. Pivotal people don't always come your best friend. When somebody blesses you and God uses them, we want to cling to them. We want to hold to them. We want them to be our friend. We want them to stay in our life. But everybody's not called to stay in your life. So stop getting mad about people that leave out of your life. They had a purpose for your life. They don't always hang around with you. It's not for you to hang on them, but to hang on God. It wasn't uh, that girl that helped him get healed. Uh, she gave him the word, but it's God that's going to do the healing. So stop hanging on to people so tight that you, you can't function without them. You can't be codependent on people all the time. You need to learn how to depend on God. So, so she blessed him. So she had the prophetic word for him. Yes, she had a prophetic healing word for Naaman, uh, but, but she fades out of the story because God reminds us even pivotal people cannot stay in this season of every season of your life. Sometimes they got to move on. So let them go and celebrate their departure. Because don't you know God got some more pivotal people for you? God got somebody else to shift you in another area of your life. God got somebody to help you with your finances. Somebody to help you get to your business. Help you to write your book. Help. There's other people in line that God has assigned to your life. They serve God's purpose. Why, why are you here? All here today. Why are you where you are and around those people who are placed in your stiff sphere of influence? Why are these people in your sphere? How do you leverage your sphere of influence for the king of kings? Mm. Ask questions I, I, I leave for you to consider. But look at the text. God pushes people beyond the normal. Number two. For, it moves from powerful to powerless to powerful to powerless. Then the powerless leaves and the powerful shows back up in the story. The focus now moves to the shifts of the king of Syria. And there's a little bit of, bit of contention there. Seemingly bent on having his commander restored, but he find that he realizes, I can't do this, although I'm the king of Syria. You see, <laughs> people may give you titles, but none of us, including me, can do what God can do for you in your life. <laughs> you, you, you can have everything set up, millions of dollars, been there, done that. And it don't mean your money is going to shift everything in your life. That's why you chase God, not money. Oh. So 
so the king does what he can do, but he doesn't do what the woman of God told him to do. He got a message with the young girl told the prophet, uh, but, but, she, but he sends a, a letter, not, the pro, not to the prophet, but to the king of Israel. You see, sometimes we so uppity, we got to talk to equals. I'm the CEO of this company, and all I want to do is talk to the CEO of that company. Uh, I, 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 I'm a lawyer, let me talk to the lawyer. Uh, I'm a pastor, let me talk to the pastor. Uh, but, but the pastor may not have your deliverance. And maybe that little mother in the front of the church that don't have no education, but has a word from God that can shift your life and change everything in your life. You looking down on, you, you, you think I got to stay at the same level to get my deliverance? No, be careful. That little person, that ex-addict, that person you laughed at before has the word to shift your life. Oh, I'm being, I'm helping myself today. Oh my God. And so you, we see here uh, how the king, he sends a letter to the king of Israel. And, and he, he must want him to be healed because he, he, he sends a letter to an enemy. <laughs> oh God, God, God. He, said, he sends a letter to the enemy. And so the king of Syria, not surprisingly, disregards the word of the slave girl. Uh, sometimes people will disregard your instructions because they think you were nobody. Can I tell you that if you are connected to the immutable God who changes not, if you believe in him and serve him with your whole heart, if you are sure your relationship is more than religion and your faith is not fake, if you can open up your mouth and testify to the passion and power and in eternal position of your God, you are somebody. Just tap, just tap your name and say, you somebody. Are you, are you a child of God, of the, of the most high God and the king of kings? You are somebody. You are somebody, although you live in the projects and on the wrong side of the tracks. You are somebody, although you are a single parent, pressing your way to live right. You are somebody, the one that left you, missed their blessing. You're still somebody. You are somebody, although you lost your job and even lost your house. You are somebody, and you just ought to tell anybody about the somebody who can heal everybody. And that'll make you somebody. If you just open up your mouth and tell anybody that there's somebody who can heal you and deliver you. Listen, listen. Listen, don't push me too hard too fast. The content of the letter is accompanied by a small fortune. He threw money at it. Perhaps thinking that it would be a catalyst for healing. If you look at verse 5 and 8, you can see it all there. The letter has the inverse result. Uh, when you look at the tech, text, it drives the king into mourning. He rents his clothes. He tears his clothes. For he knows that God alone can give life and assumes that this king of Syria is picking another fight. He's basically thinking that I'm sending my commander to heal you. And, and, and to the Israel with a letter to, to, to have him heal. And basically, if he don't get healed, we're coming to get you. Sometimes blessings are right in front of us, but we're scared because of past experiences. We, 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 we are afraid to initiate and to follow the flow of God because of our reputation with the fellas. Uh -huh. uh, because because what, what we think we know, but we really don't know, but we're scared and we're fearful. Uh, and so uh, he thinks uh, the king is picking a fight. He's setting him up. He's already invaded uh, Israel and, 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 and snatched the, the, the children and the women. Uh, uh, and yet, but don't miss it, the king of Syria already pushed out of his comfort zone because he's writing a letter to his enemy. God will help you even though you don't know it's his invisible hand to break out of your normal. You see, one of the things the text says that Naaman is a good man. That there was something in him, despite being the general who, who kidnapped the girl and a lot of other women and children and put Israel down. Uh, that little girl saw something on the inside that, that was worth saving. And, and I don't know if you passed a couple of people coming to church today uh, and, never, and then they decide to stop by and ask them, are you going to church today? 
uh, because the way they smelled and the way they walked and uh, they didn't look good enough. But this girl saw something despite his title. She saw something despite his, his, his invading power. He saw, she saw something. And so the king of Israel pushed out of his comfort zone and uh, didn't do what, what the girl said, but he wrote a letter. He attempts to do good, but he went about it the bad way. He didn't follow the word that was given. I stopped by this morning to let you know that God is still talking. God's talking through people. God's talking through his word. God's talking through the preacher this morning. God's trying to get your attention. God's trying to give you a word. But too many of us will not listen to the, the word. We're listening to a word. Uh, you're listening to the wrong people to direct your life. You got to get out of all that horoscope stuff. You got to get out of all that open stuff. Stop following everybody on social media. You need to get in your Bible and get your word from the Lord and, and tune your ear because there is a word that was given. And many people, can I say it? Many people delay their transformation to their best self. Mm. Because they or somebody else did not follow or can't handle the word straight from the vessel that God assigned it to. God gave her the word to deliver. How many words that God gave you to deliver to a person, but you say, I'm not doing it? How, how many words that God moved in your spirit prompted you to say this to somebody? And because you say, I, I, I'm not in position to say that. I, I, God told me to say something to pastor, but I, I, I can't say nothing to pastor. Why not? Amen. You a believer. He'll use you to help me. Don't keep a word that God gave you for me. I need your word. Anybody want that word that God has for you? If it's for me, I need that word. I need him to deliver that word. I need a real man, man or a man or woman. I need somebody to deliver it. If you got the word to deliver, make sure you deliver it. Many people delay transformation to their best self because they or somebody else did not follow or can't handle the word straight from the vessel of God. The king did his part, but provokes, uh, he was uncomfortable. If he did, it was abnormal. But it was the wrong word. And God pushed Nathan to go, Naaman to go anyway. Nathan didn't wait for the response. Nathan breaks protocol and skips the king's action and goes to the source. His king communicated through a letter, even sent a bail money to get him out of jail of leprosy. Mm -hmm. He sent bail money to get him out of the jail of leprosy. You might have money, but you can't buy what God has for you or another person. You can't buy your healing or your deliverance. You can't move God's hands, but your attempts to use your power to change things will continue to fail. It may work for people, but it won't work for God. Naaman did the uncomfortable thing. He broke protocol and social norms. He pushed past the pomp and the circumstances, the rules and the regulations, and he was determined to go what, get what he needed. And I just need three people who's determined to pursue your deliverance and to pursue your healing uh, determined to pursue your freedom determined to pursue your promise uh, determined to pursue your inheritance uh, determined to, to pursue the new life that you've been desiring uh, you're going to go get your miracle because you are the miracle you're not going to wait for somebody to do what you can do yourself you're going to get on your own horse and chariot and make your way because I can't stay in the same position for another day or another week I'm going to have to go get what I need excuse me I'm going around you, I'm going up under you Whatever I need to do to get what I need to get I'm going to go get it And so I want you to stop waiting for a miracle And become your miracle Stop waiting for others to do for you uh, And you get what belongs to you Stop waiting for others to negotiate for you uh, You go make it happen yourself Stop waiting for someone else to pave the way And pay the way so You receive that word Run and go get it The word has your name on it Run and go get it The word was designed for you Don't let someone else fulfill what has been set aside for you You, you didn't deserve that word But he gave it to you anyway Oh, God, beloved, uh, you wasn't worshiping God, Naaman. You wasn't even thinking about God. But God reached through a little pivotal person to let anyone else know that you can reach their life. No one's too far from God who can, who can reach you. I need to close because this narrative then turns to Elisha's intervention. Upon the arrival of Naaman and his entourage, Elisha did not see him but sends a messenger with a prescription. Here's the general. 
He arrives with all his chariots. He they can hear him coming down. The, the ground is thunder and he's coming. And he stands at the door. And Elijah didn't even come out. He's used to everybody responding when he came around. He used to people jumping over themselves. Even the enemy was fearful of him because of the power that he had. And Elijah chills out, sipping his coffee. Tell him to go take a tip and go dip. Let me, let me give you a tip. Go dip. Go, go. Go out there seven times. How dare he? He doesn't have the nerve to come out here and see me. I expected him to come out and call on the God of heaven and move his hands and watch the miracles happen and walk pow. It all happen like that. But he didn't even come out the door. See, sometimes God has to humble you to shape you into who he wants you to be. Sometimes God has to break you to make you. Do I have a witness? And so with all his entourage, he says seven washes in the Jordan. Simple instructions. Sometimes simple things. People, people looking for uh, uh, complex solutions to complex problems. Stop looking for complex solutions to complex problems. Sometimes wisdom gives simplicity. Yeah. It, sometimes the, pro the answer to your problem is right in your hand. Sometimes the answer to your problem is right already in your heart. But God has to reveal what you got in your hand. Moses, uh, the, the, the stick that you got in your hand is what I'm going to use to part the water. Uh, Moses was trying to find out what, what God's going to do. God said, look at your hand. You got a stutter, but you also got a stick. And some of you are looking for the wrong thing. The solution is simple. Who follows? Look, look, look. He, he, what follows is a give and take. Naaman is pissed off upset. Because of, listen, because of simpl simplicity and locality. Because he told him to go to Jordan. And to get to Jordan, he has to go to the enemy's territory and, and get in the Jordan. If you remember, in Joshua, the people had to pass, pass over Jordan and leave stones of remembrance. Jordan symbolizes a uh, 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 victory and power. Uh, and the last thing that he wants to do is go to Jordan to dip seven times. He says, ain't my rivers in Damascus in Assyria better than those in Jordan? You see the arrogance? Uh, uh, isn't there a better place? Well, why do I need to come to northeast and southeast for the church? Uh, isn't my church better uh, around my neighborhood? But well, sometimes God keeps you humble when you go to the low places. Uh, and the no places. And, and so he really wants to know, why Jordan? He's mad. He said, take a tip. You need to dip. He sends him to dip as a typology of baptism, if you're going to be renewed, you're going to have to enter the same water that Jesus will enter for his baptism later on. He's going to get baptized in joy and then come out and a dove will descend all the way down and say, this is my beloved son who's well pleased. That's a typology of the baptism that you get and I get when we are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. He's telling him, if you're going to be whole, you're going to have to take a dip. And he's not only talking about physical water, but he's talking about the spirit. If you, if you really going to get a change. We're going to have to go down in the deep water of the Holy Ghost. We're going to have to go down with this power. We're going to have to go down with this deliverance and healing. We're going to have to go down not one time, not two times. Not f We're going to have to go completely down. You're going to have to go seven times down to complete the work that God wants to do in your life. And sometimes you're so God cheap. You better let God what he's doing to you like can I tell something right now many of us in the church we got saved but we never got sanctified Ooh, we went into the physical water of baptism but we never asked God for the power of the Holy Ghost to baptize me with that I need to dip seven times in you God so I can break the curse of my family life I need to dip seven times in you God to break every stronghold and curse from generations and build around the Maxwell house I need to dip seven times one for the money two for the shame three to get ready and four to go I need four more I need to dip seven times God because I want your power to change this leprosy on my life I got all kinds of leprosy on my body leprosy in my spirit leprosy in my mind I got bad dreams 
emotions and no hope. I got leprosy in my thinking, leprosy in my walk, leprosy in my relationships. I sleep with him on Monday. I sleep with her on Tuesday. I sleep with him on Thursday. I sleep with another her on Thursday. I got leprosy in my behavior. Leprosy, I need to go deeper. I need to go deeper. And I'll just end in the final remark. I won't preach no more because I'll hurt you if I keep preaching. God punishes the pimp hanging around. You see, he dips. He gets healed. The Bible says all that leprosy was all over his skin, under his garments. And bear in mind, when it says dip, it means butt naked. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all missed that. You see, they, they, in the days of old, they wasn't so caught up in, in sexuality the way we are. They went, they took their garment off, which was usually one, but he had, he had garments of layers because he was a general. So he had to take his breastplate off and his helmet. He had to take all his undergarments and he had to take off the robe and then he had to take off another undergarment. Then he had to take off the shields and all the uh, boots and everything. But he gets off everything and he goes butt naked and dips. One. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six. And if you miss it, the Bible says his skin was like a baby. He must be born again. You got to come like a child. You got to start from beginning. You got to go back to your childhood when you're born again. You are not a mature adult when you're born again. You start from a child and God raises you up to a mature adult in a spiritual realm. Stop thinking you're wrong. You've only been, been saved two years and you're trying to turn the whole world upside down. You haven't even learned how to repent yet. You got to He had baby skin. He had baby skin. Oh, I see, see, y'all, see, y'all, y'all, so uh, I still use baby oil. See, y'all, y'all, y'all got all kind of stuff that got all kind of stuff in it. If it's good for babies, I'm using it. Because baby oil will help you keep your youth. And you brothers, if you're single, it'll help make women think that you got children around and they ain't falling in love with you. Hallelujah, that's another sermon. <laughs> but he was, skin was like a newborn baby. He gets healed, he raises up, he tries to offer the prophet gifts and say, here's an oxen and here's gifts, gifts, always trying to pay. And he said, the prophet says, no. I wish prophets would say no today. Because they say, give me. Give me this. If you give me some money and I, and I put it in the cloth, I'll send it to be healed. That's not biblical. Whom the son says free is free indeed. And it's free. If you got the power to heal, go to the hospital and let go. Stop, stop following people that's always got to have money to heal somebody. I know you're going to get mad with me. I know you, yeah, you're going to get mad, but that's all right. Tell them what I said. And so he has... Elijah, look at that. He has this brother hanging out, Gehazi. And Gehazi, just like today, they, you can't go in Israel and talk about Naaman. They still pissed off about it. They mad that the prophet even healed, Elisha even healed Naaman. They won't even want to tell that story. It actually disrupts their whole consonance, their whole sense of feeling if you lift up the healing of Naaman to Israelites today. But, but, here he heals him. He tries to pay him. He says no. And then his pimp guy, he says, you know, cool, cool. I'm going to run out. Yo, no, no. And just, just say goodbye and wish him farewell. And he ran up to him. Listen, you know, that, you, know that, you know that big money he was getting ready to lay on him? Laid on me. <laughs> he said, give me the talents. Give me all the money. Give me the bag. Give me the burden. Give me all that. And he said, give me all that. that boom, he, he got all that stuff. He put it to his servants. You see, he got his own servants. That's when you know they're trying to take your church. They, that, they got their own servants. Yeah, that's another sermon. <laughs> and then he gets, he gets all that stuff. He runs out. He hides it outside and go in the house. 
my Lord, Elisha, I praise him. Elisha said, ooh, didn't you go running behind the man of God, Naaman, and uh, had a conversation? No, I, was, I didn't go nowhere. I didn't go with her. That's what I mean. I didn't go nowhere. I was right in the area. Because he didn't want the prophet to know that he just scammed. Oh, God. He scammed, and now he's going to be damned. And so I want you to understand, because too many people today is worried about the condition of the church and worried what's going to happen to all those who are scamming Jesus. They're worried whether the church is authentic and if pastors and leaders are going to do right by my money, even though it's all God's money. They, they're worried about uh, how giving happens and all these things you're concerned. You're, you're worried about the wrong thing. The Bible says judgment is going to happen and it's going to happen close to the prophet. Those who are already in the church is going to get judged first, especially those close to the prophet. Those who have a two-timing agenda, who's using Elisha's name to try to get money on his behalf. I'm trying to tell you, you don't have to worry about them. Because Jesus did a complete work on the cross. Uh, he did a delivery work and a salvific work. He did a healing work, but he also did a work of judgment. <laughs> uh, he's not only uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's not only the one who deliver you and heal you, but he's also the King of Kings and the judge of all judges and he will come back one day for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. He'll come back to separate wheat from chaff real pastors from fake pastors real parishioners from fake parishioners real people that love him from people who's only there to get a little hustle on the side only there to make a name for themselves God's going to send judgment to the house of the Lord for everyone who's been scamming is going to be dead but everyone who's been playing the game is going to be jealous. That's good news. You don't have to worry with the, with the people are doing. Just worry about your salvation. Just worry that you do God's will. Open up your mouth and tell the good news to Jesus. Tell them that God can heal them, that God can deliver, that God's still in the delivering business. Open your mouth in the sphere of influence. When you're on your job, tell them about Jesus. When you're in your house, tell them. Think about you. Tell the children and the children's children that God still are in the saving business. The ship of Zion is still sailing and the end has not come yet. There's still many souls to save and people to deliver. I'm so glad that the pimps and the hustlers in the church is going to have their day. I'm so glad that they're not going to get away with murder. They're not going to keep doing what they're doing. One day judgment will come and there's going to be a new day and we're going to be birthed in the God. Father thank you Lord for such a story I pray that we be as humble as a little girl in the story that influences or tells people about the prophet and the healing that comes from God I pray for a humble heart that we're not trying to get attention, but we're trying to influence people for God to remind people that there's a God in the land. I pray in 2020, we don't lose our mind about who's going to win the election, but we lose our mind on the King of Kings who has the whole government on his shoulders. I pray that we do our responsibilities like Naaman. Go get what belongs to us. Go vote. Go do our civil action. Go do our, you share our gifts. But don't let somebody do everything for us. I pray that we stop worrying about all those who is undercover, undercutting, working things out for themselves. You're going to take care of them too. I thank you, God, for saving all of us. And if there's somebody that's not saved, I pray that this word would cause them to run and give their life to Jesus. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Let everybody put their hands together.